Before we get started, I know it's been a while. I have some breaking news to tell you. It's very personal for me. I now identify as a tree. So if you can now refer to me as spruce, cedar, pine, birch, or any of the above, it would be greatly appreciated. Good morning, you motherfucking sunshines. All right, good morning, mofos. Welcome back to the IB Tech Channel, the most family-friendly goddamn hiking channel on the internet today. Last time I checked, which has been a long fucking time. But here I am, I am not dead. Uh, reached out to you fuckers on Instagram, see if you had any questions for me, and you uh, you had about 50 of them, so um, we we'll probably won't do all of them in this video, I'll probably break it up into two parts. It's fucking snowing out. It's sn sunny and snowing. <sighs> Welcome to spring Colorado. Anyway, we'll do half those questions in this video, we'll do another half of them next week. Um, so let's not dilly-dally around, let's get to the questions, mine. First question is from... Mick32, would you ever through hike or section hike the AT again? You know, if, I've been asked this a lot uh, the last couple of years. If you asked me a year ago, and I probably answered it a year ago, I'd say 100% yes, I would through hike the AT again. Nowadays, it's like the more I go down that rabbit hole of long distance hiking, there's so many damn trails out there that I want to do. Um, I think that AT, doing the AT again is going to be put on the back burner. I would 100% yes, do it again. But like I said, there's so many other trails I want to do in the meantime. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, now, as far as doing like a section hike on the AT, if I had the time and I was in the area, 100%, yeah, get my ass on that fucking trail again. But as far as doing the whole damn thing again, uh, I probably will, but it's going to be later down the line when I'm old and decrepit and, <laughs> you know, I need, I need to take those, um, I need to have the fucking hostels take my pack to the next town stop. Next question is for, uh, or is from bearbait underscore 4214. If you could go back and tell yourself one thing before you started the AT, what would it be? Good question. Uh, probably, you know, when I started vlogging the AT, I didn't realize, I didn't think my channel would take off like it did. Um, so when I started out, it wasn't very many people watching, and then, you know, word of mouth, especially on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, people start sharing your shit and all of a sudden you got thousands of people watch you fucking walk every day which was pretty surreal at the time now I'm a very stubborn individual in case you haven't noticed watching me over the last few years I don't like people telling me what to do so with all the trolls I wasn't expecting on the AT and you if you guys watch that blog and if you haven't go back and watch it I go off <laughs> I rant a lot on that um, cussing at trolls um, because like I said I'm stubborn and when you get some asshole sitting on his couch telling me what to do when I'm out there hiking you know every day uh, it annoyed the living hell out of me and I went off on that shit um, but if I could go back in time I would have just deleted that shit right away and not ranted on it because a lot of those comments ruined my fucking day out there no joke I'd, I'd get to a top of a mountain start reading comments and I'd read some asshole telling me what to do out there and it would ruin my whole fucking day where whereas if I would just ignore that shit I could have just enjoyed that day and I would have forgot about it the next day. So I held on to that shit a lot longer than I should have, especially on the Appalachian Trail. Definitely gotten better with it over the years. I still rant and shit, but uh, it's not like I was, you know, four or five years ago. This question is from underscore trails are calling underscore. How are you going to pack for Switzerland? I believe she means sw Sweden. I'm going to Sweden this year, if you haven't noticed or haven't followed me on Instagram. Uh, I'm going to hike the Kungsleden in uh, northern Sweden. About 270 miles, I'm going to yo-yo it, uh, so 540 total. Um, how am I going to pack for that? Same as I pack, I mean, I don't plan these hikes very often, very, very much. I just throw my shit in a backpack and go walk, really. Uh, obviously, it's a little more to it than that, but you know what I mean. Getting to the trail, the logistics of actually getting to the trail and starting the trail is the hardest part for me, um, and especially going overseas. Uh, in Scotland, I had to, you know, on a flight like that, you can't take trekking poles, you can't take tent stakes, fuel, things like that. So stuff you have to worry about once you get there. Um, I'll have to take a check-on bag 
or check a bag going to Sweden with my trekking poles and my tent stakes in it and then have somebody watch it when I'm in Sweden so I don't have to worry about mailing that shit overseas because I'll be paranoid it would get lost. So that's really the only thing I worry about on these long trails is actually getting to the trail trailhead with all my gear and then after that it's just second nature. So I won't pack any different um, than I have in, in the past. Next question is from Mallory Smith. How did you get started, uh, get started selling prints? Um, I guess that came from requests, really. Um, when I finished the AT, uh, this is before I really got into photography. I was out there with a point shoot camera um, and my cell phone for the most part. Once I finished the AT, I did have people reach out asking if they could have this photo or that photo or you know, am I selling prints? You should sell prints. And um, and so I did. It was, it was back then, it was really, pretty much me going to Walgreens or CVS with my cell phone <laughs> importing the footage and printing it at, at the fucking uh, you know one hour photo place and then sending them off to people. Now on the PCT I up upgraded a full frame camera and got serious about photography um, and that's when I you know felt comfortable getting a website and do actually doing prints and if you I don't know for me personally I noticed the, the, the more I hike and the more I take photos on trail it's less spray and pray and I'm more deliberate in what I photograph. When I take photographs nowadays, I think to myself, would I like to put that on my wall? Um, and that's how I, I, my mindset is. Um, so on the, on the PCT and CDT in Scotland, I took fewer and fewer photos because I was more deliberate in what I was photographing. Um, and um, and that's, that was my whole mindset on that. So that's how I got started though. Next question is from uh, Wagner underscore Swagner. What is the airspeed velocity of a unladen swallow? Fast as fuck, mine. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good Jeopardy question. No fucking idea. Uh, walking underscore days. What do you find the hardest thing when on a long through hike? For me, it's, uh, it's finishing the hikes. Uh, I, I, what I mean by that is having to finish and go back home. <laughs> That's the hardest part for me. Uh, if you guys watched my CDT hike, man, I was towards the end. I was wrecked. My body and uh, mentally I was drained. I lost like 30 pounds. I had COVID. I was, I was fucking done, man. But when I got like two days to the end, you guys saw me. I about lost my shit and started bawling my eyes out because it dawned on me that as much pain as I am, I'm, I'm finishing here in two days and I got to go back to bullshit real world and I don't want to fucking do that. So for me, that is the hardest part about these long hikes is having to finish them and, and go home. Um, aside from that, it's the mental battles. You know, I can deal with physical, physical pain uh, I've proven that over the last four years or so, you know, falling down mountains and, and uh, getting cut up and, you know, passing on the trail from heat exhaustion and all that shit. I can keep going physically. Um, it's the mental mental strain that takes a toll, um, especially on those long days in the desert, man, when the horizon never gets closer. And like on the AT, when you've been pissed on for four days in a row and you finally get into town, you're sitting in a nice, warm, comfy hotel bed, ordering Domino's pizza, and you look out the window and it's still pissing out, and you're like, well, shit, I don't have to go back out, out in that stuff. I can, you know, get a bus ride home. It's it's putting yourself back out there mentally, knowing that you're going to go back out and be in pain and all that shit. That's the hardest part about these trails. I would say probably 80% of the people that, that fail these long hikes, they quit mentally. Obviously, they can take another step, but they're not willing to. Next question is from Renee underscore VD underscore Har. PCT 23 high snow advice. <laughs> Good luck with that shit, man. I've seen videos recently of like Truckee, California up there, man. They got what, like 13 feet of snow last time I checked. It's going to be buried. But you know what? I did it in 19. It was a high snow year too. And I, you know, I never hiked at elevation on snow like that before. It was my first time. So, you know, I went up there and I, 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 I pushed through it. Um, I will say this, the fear mongering, the fear mongering that you're going to um, encounter on the PCT is going to be bullshit, okay? You're going to hear it from many hikers, from town folk, you know, people on social media, they're all going to say, don't go up on that shit, it's too dangerous. Well, go up there in that bullshit, okay? You have to see it with your own goddamn eyes, and that's the mindset I had. Was I scared shitless going up in the Sierra? Hell yes, I was scared shitless going up in the Sierra, but... You get in with a group, you get in with a partner, you do it together, one day at a time, one pass at a time, one river crossing at a time, and you inch your way through the Sierra. That's that's the only advice I can give you. Be smart about it, know how to use your ice axe, bring micro spikes, take it slow, 
don't do anything dangerous um well dangerous you're gonna do shit dangerous but don't do anything life-threatening dangerous if you feel uncomfortable there's no shame in backtracking do it again next year no shame in that whatsoever all right next question is from amy michelle 523 when do you leave for the, your next hiking adventure so the coming Sladen, i am uh flying out to stockholm august 9th i believe um give myself a few days to get over jet lag and whatnot and enjoy uh, stockholm for a day or two and then I got to take a long ass bus ride up from Stockholm to the trails in northern Sweden. Um, it's, it's, it's something stupid like a 12 hour bus ride I got to take up there uh, to get to the actual trailhead. So I'll probably end up starting around the 12th or 13th of August, I'm guessing. And like I said, yo yo yo, it's 540 miles roughly. It should take me just under two months, I'm guessing, if I take it my sweet ass time. Um, and then I'll uh, probably enjoy Stockholm after I finish for, for a few days before I fly back to the States. All right, next question is from Rose Reed. Do you still think of that one day in Scotland as your best hiking day ever? Not sure I know what day you're referring to. I had a few <laughs> a few good days in Scotland. <laughs> I laugh when I say that because it rained a hell of a lot. Um, you're probably referring to a day that was sunny all day. Uh, I had a few of those on the Scottish National Trail. Um, those days were usually the best. You know, I didn't mind, once I got up in the Highlands, I didn't mind the rain so much because it was so fucking beautiful up there. Uh, you just kind of got used to it at that point. But I do remember one day, uh, I can't remember the exact location, I was hiking by a river and I had lunch by these old ruins, this castle ruins out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and it was sunny and I went to a bathroom, met this dude from Germany I was hiking. Um, I remember that being a really fucking good day. It's the days that you don't have to think about, you know, damn I'm getting rain on or damn it's snowing or damn it's muddy out or, you know, it's, it's the days that it's, it's stress free and you're just walking. Those are the best days for me. All right, uh, Nobo Stone, my boy Snazzy, he's got a few questions. Uh, is Snazzy the do dopest mofo you, you have ever hiked with? 100%, bro. <laughs> Snazzy, if you don't know, uh, he was uh, with our group who finished the PCT in 19 through all that bullshit snow at the end up in Washington. And I believe Snazzy, not to throw you under the bus, but I believe Snazzy was the one that broke into that, uh, broke the lock on that Ranger cabin, um, which we got fined for <laughs> up at uh, Hearts Pass. Um, but yeah, Snazzy enjoyed hiking with you guys. If it wasn't for those fuckers, like I said before uh, in the past, I would have never finished that trail. I would have bailed probably because um, we, we all stuck together through that last uh, 60 miles or so in the PCT to get to Canada through all that fucking snow. So now, uh, Snazzy also wants to know, uh, love seeing your photos. Ever think of doing a coffee table type photo book? I've done one in the past. The reason I stopped doing that is because it costs a shit ton of money to make those things. If you want good high res photos, um, which if you're not going to do good high res photos, what's the fucking point in doing it? But the cost of doing a book like that, I have, I would have to charge an insane amount of money, more than I would feel comfortable charging people to actually turn any any sort of, uh, sort of profit on that. So that's why I stick to doing prints and calendars because they're a little cheaper to, to produce. Um, I would love to do one in the, in the, in the future, um, if, if not to sell, but just for my own personal collection um, after I got done with all this hiking bullshit so I can reminisce when I'm a decrepit old man of what I've been through. Uh, and the last question from Snazzy is, when was the last time you were clean shaven? Oh, fuck. <clears throat> I have no idea. <laughs> I started growing this thing long anyway uh, during the AT and just never really sh shaved it after that. When I was a line cook in uh, North Carolina, um, I had it shaved when I first moved to North Carolina, but that was probably back, fuck, 2013, 2014, somewhere around there, I'm guessing it was the last time. I was clean shaven, I really don't remember. Beer's not going anywhere though. <laughs> um, all right, next question is from Greg Mountain or uh, Greg Morton Outdoors. Which Greg, nice to see you, bud. Uh, I met him on his through hike of the AT when I was doing that section in the trail days. Um, I'm looking uh, at the CDT for next year, hell yeah. Um, what, uh, what amount of money would you uh, expect the cost to be? It, it's different for everybody. I know it's a bullshit vague answer, but Generally speaking, about a thousand dollars a month is a good number to have in your head. Um, obviously, it's gonna. It all comes down to how well you want to live in town, really. If you take a couple zeros, especially in like California, some of these more expensive states, um, there's no hostels around, so you're paying for lodge rooms, 150 a night. 
and you want to go out to eat because you got the hiker hunger, you can walk out of a town easily with a $300 bill, and I've done it many fucking times. On the AT, you got hostels in every town, so it might be a little cheaper. Um, the gear aside, you know, you're going to have to replace gear at some point. Shit's going to break, especially on CDT, um, so you have to take that into consideration. But I would say $1,000 a month minimum is a good number to shoot for on any of these long trails. All right, Rush uh, Rush 6539 asks, how old is Roscoe? Roscoe P. Waggletails is nine years old. I got him and he was about that fucking big. He's been through a lot with me. I got him right after I got sober and he, he's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'm continued to be sober for nine years. Um, yeah, I owe a lot to that little fucking guy. Um, he's my baby boy. And the main reason why I've taken a break from doing like six month long hikes um, is, is, is because of him. Now that he's getting up in age, I don't want to be gone for six months in case something happened to him. I won't be able to live with myself. So I'm trying to keep it to these shorter you know, two month long hikes um, to where I, I know he's, he's, he's gonna be all right and I can get back home to him as quickly as possible. I am uh, Ted Godel asks, any ideas of your next trail? Well, aside from Sweden, next year I'm toying with the idea of doing the Great Divide Trail up in Canada. I mean, the Canadian Rockies are, they look fucking epic. Um, that trail looks amazing. It's about 800 miles, I wanna say. Um, yeah, the Canadian Rockies look fucking amazing. I've, I've toyed around with the idea of the AZT as well. Um, I prefer mountains to desert, <laughs> but uh, the AZT is probably, probably up there on the list. Um, next year, I would really love to do a, a shorter hike as well as a uh, photography trip. To like to, um, in fact, some guy just hit me up on Instagram this morning. Um, he knows uh, uh, a guide, photography guide out, down in South Africa. Um, he said I should hit him up, but something like that. Like it would just go with my big lens uh, right there animals for a week somewhere uh, exotic would be fucking epic so i'm gonna look into doing that as well as a, a short trail possibly the gdt next year bruce underscore hotson asks do you even hike anymore dude <laughs> lol uh it feels like i don't you know when i say when i think of hiking i think of long distance hiking that's that's how my mind works um but if you mean like just regular hiking i hike every day uh, I'm out in the woods every day with that big ass lens you see behind me, hiking around uh, Rocky Mountain National Park, lo looking for uh, animals to photograph. I, I do that every day. Um, I'm, I'm at a bullshit fucking job. I got to work 40 hours a week, but sometimes I'm out before work in the morning, earliest in the mornings, and almost every day I go out after work, uh, if, even if it's just for like a one, two mile hike um, to go find some critters to photograph. I need to be out in the woods every fucking day or else I will lose my goddamn mind. So yes, I've been hiking. Long distance hiking is one of those once a year type things. All right, let's rifle through about eight more of these and then we'll, we'll cut this video there. I'm sure you fuckers are yawning already. Uh, outdoor maintenance underscore service. Uh, what's your favorite night walk you have ever done? I'm not really a night hiker. I've done it in the past, meaning I get up at the ass crack of dawn before the sunrise to do like passes in the Sierra or in the San Juans um, or in the desert when, you know, it's just flat as fuck and you just, mindless walk through the night or early mornings i've done that i'm just not a fan of it especially being a vlogger i need i need to film in the daylight hours nobody wants to see me filming with just a fucking headlamp that's all you can see so i try to keep it to the daylight daylight hours but like i said for safety reasons like in the sierra and the san juans you're forced to get up before sunrise and get up over those passes before that sun started melting that snow for safety reasons so um yeah i can't remember a specific time where i really enjoyed <laughs> night hiking um, let's see here. Weasley underscore McOneLeg, any interest in bike packing? I know once upon a time you were ripping up mountain bike trails. Yeah, I was a big mountain biker before I got into backpack. I had to choose between the hobbies because I was eyeballing like $4,000 mountain bikes and $600 tents, and I can't afford all that shit on a line cook salary, so I chose backpacking. But um, I would, yeah, I would get into bike packing, but it's going to be way, way, way down the line. When my joints and my knees are fucked and my ankles are fucked and I can't walk these long distance trails anymore, then yes, I'll consider bike packing. Uh, I met plenty of them doing the Allegheny Gap and the Sino Canal. Um, good people. It's just it's the same uh, mindset, just different mode of transportation. It is fucking beautiful with the snow right now. It is sun. <laughs> the sun is shining and it is just coming down. Oh, this is lovely. Spring in Colorado, man. <laughs> um. Let's see here, shenanigisms, uh, <laughs> mine are all inappropriate. Well, we have the same mind. <laughs> well played. Uh, Outdoors Daniel uh, asked, 
Uh, are you going to, um, are you doing the always fun and chill AT trail days this year? No, I'm not going to make it this year. I already booked my flight for Sweden. I can't really afford another plane ticket out to Virginia for trail days, even though I'd like to. Um, in fact, I've actually considered just moving to Damascus, Virginia. I've been there like a half a dozen times. I've hiked that area many times. I, I love that town just because the whole economy is based off of backpacking. Multiple outfitters there, big mountain bike community. You got the Creeper Trail right there. The AT literally goes down the sidewalk. I would consider moving to Damascus, uh, Virginia. In fact, I'm probably gonna hit up one of those outfitters uh, and see if I can get a job there next winter and, and possibly get back down south and go, get away from this fucking shit. <laughs> oh man, winter's been long here in Colorado. Um, Christine's Frontier. Um, where do you see yourself settling down long term? I don't see myself settling down long term. <laughs> I think I would be a nomad for the, till the day I die. Um, I get bored in one spot. I mean, I'm literally feet away from Rocky Mountain National Park and I'm already ready to see something new. I mean, that's how my fucking brain works. I'm in a beautiful location, but there's always something cool to see. I gotta go see something over on the next hill. Uh, it's just the way I've been for, I think this is my seventh state in like 10 or 11 years now. Uh, I don't know, Alaska. I will move to Alaska when I'm old, some cabin in the middle of fucking nowhere where nobody's going to bother me. That's probably where I'll settle down way, way, way down the line. Um, Christine's Frontier also asks, thoughts on city life versus country life and leaving city life behind for the outdoor lifestyle? Are you asking for you or me? Um, I assume for you. If you live in a city and you're not used to the outdoor community, I mean, you're in for a fucking treat, I'll tell you that. I couldn't imagine living in a city, man. Um, I've met plenty of people on the trails from like, you know, Brooklyn and Chicago and places like this where they get out in the woods and like, holy shit, this is what real living is like. It's it's a different mindset, it's a different community in these small mountain towns, man. The people are awesome. Everybody's outside doing something. I couldn't imagine being in a fucking city, man. It's gonna be a culture shock for sure, but you won't know until you actually try it. So get your ass out in the woods and uh, you might never go back. Dave uh, Gao asks, uh, AT still your fave? Yeah, AT will always be my fave. It's my first love. It's the first trail I ever did long distance. But I will say the PCT is pretty fucking epic. <laughs> they're, they're, the PCT keeps inching closer and closer in my mind on, uh, on trails I love the most. Um, yeah, the PCT is epic. But the AT is just walking through the woods, man. It doesn't get any better than that for me. I don't need the big grand views all fucking day. Just give me a, a nice path through the woods and I'm, I'm happier than a pig and shit mine all right last question for this video Russell uh, Russell T asks favorite thing about Michigan if you don't know I'm a Michigan boy a boy born and raised um, and I haven't been back to Michigan since I moved out I will say my favorite thing about Michigan is the Upper Peninsula up north baby um, up north Michigan is it's it's a whole nother world you might as well be Canada once you cross over the Mackinac Bridge in the UP, man, you're in Canada, basically. Um, the people are awesome up there. Everybody, it's a big hunting, outdoors, fishing community. Uh, in fact, they close the schools in the Upper Peninsula during hunting season. That's how important it is up there. Uh, I hunted up there for probably 12 years since I was like 14 to whatever age. Um, so I moved out of there. I, I never missed a deer season. We I used to go up to Burglar, Michigan, uh, deer hunting up there. Went up to Lake Superior fishing all the time as a kid. Um, the upper, the upper Peninsula is amazing. Pictured Rocks, Mackinac Island, fuck man. If you, go to go to uh, the UP in, in the fall. The fall colors in Michigan are hard to beat, man. Um, that's probably my, my favorite part. Uh, my favorite thing about Michigan is the upper, the upper Peninsula. All right, I'm gonna stop babbling. Holy fuck, it's still snowing. I'm gonna go try to photograph some critters, man. And I uh, came down here to this creek and see if this is where this owl has been perched. Follow me on Instagram. Um, this is always been perched right over here, so I come down here almost every day try to check and see if he's here. And my game cam is not too far, so I gotta go check that. But anywho, um, all the fun links will be in the description box below. Uh, my Instagram, Patreon. By the way, thank you for everybody that stuck around this off season. All that money is not going to waste; it's going straight into me going uh, to Sweden. So thank you very much for that support. That link will be down below, PayPal and all that shit. Um, my photography website uh, will be linked on my Instagram as well as down below if you guys want to check out my print section. Um, and uh, all the prints will, are still available. I will sign in every single one and uh, date it before I ship them out. So thank you all for the support. I'll see you guys all next week with the second half of this Q&A. <sighs> well, how's your fuckers later, man?